Okay, we're about ready to begin. Uh, thank you all for joining. I know you got a busy schedule today, and it's um, and I know you've um, sacrificing some time to come to this, but you will gain good, valuable insight that's going to improve your business. This is going to help you get a grip on your online marketing, and and I'm excited that you are here. I know you're busy business owners, so I'm going to make this information incredibly valuable, to the point, and concise so that you can use it to the best of your ability immediately. So let's get started. What we're going to talk about is your digital marketing for your business, how you are seen on the internet. And no matter what type of business you have, this is vitally important. Matter of fact, this is the most important marketing strategy you need for your business. It must begin here. I cannot emphasize that enough. So you're going to learn the basic strategies of online marketing for your local business. Pretty cool? Let's get started. Now in this webinar we're going to give you three things. First is the goal of your online marketing. What it is to look like. We'll be able to take a peek and you'll be able to see what online marketing looks like. The neat thing about digital marketing is it's completely measurable. The guesswork is gone. You know if it's working, you know if it doesn't. That's the nice thing about the digital age is um, the, the day of guesswork is over for your online marketing, for any of your marketing. We're going to look at the four primary steps for your online marketing. There are four things that need to get done, and this is what I'm going to emphasize here. This is the basics for marketing right here. And then I'm going to give you some free online tools to assess your current online presence. You know when you go into a, a new mall and you're not sure where you are, you go to the map and there's that little sticker that says you are here. That's what we're going to do. We're going to find out where you are so thus you know where you need to go. Good? So first, here is um, something fancy terms called a SERP or search engine results page. Or basically this is a Google search, right? And what you see at the top, highlighted in green, is the uh, SEM or pay-per-click, and then you have these other blue listings below it, and then below that you have Google+. Plus. So let me get my pointer ready so I can highlight a few things for you. So right here we have the uh, pay-per-click, and then down below the SEO, and then over here is the Google+. Plus. This is also pay-per-click, by the way. So let's take a look at this. SEM. This is um, a very strong place to be. Now, I know a lot of you are already thinking, I never push these buttons. I never click these links. I never go here because I know they're ads. So most likely you're looking here in the SEO section. And uh, this is obviously where the organic is. This is where the most trusted clicks are. And I'm going to unpack all these in detail in just a moment. And then finally, you've got the Google Plus page or Google Places where your business listing would show up organically as well. Now, two of these are free. They just take sweat equity or a lot of work. And then the SEM is, um, is obviously paid. But so something that I want to point out here is this is what your online presence should look like. You should be here, you should be here, and you should be here. You should be in the SEM, the SEO, and the Google+. Now think about it for a second. Why should you be in all three of these locations? If 95% of the clicks on a search happen within the first seven links, and you're dominating three of them, what does that say about the authority and trustworthiness of your business in your local market? Think about it. Think about the effects of that. You know, a lot of times people don't trust the SEM because they know they're just links that might take them to the other side of the country. But what if the SEO reinforces that? And what if the Google Plus page reinforces that? Bottom line is this is what your online marketing should look like. This is how you know you've arrived that you are there, at least two, if, you, if you're still now afraid of before SEM. Before we go into unpacking how this is all done, first I want to mention where you need kinds to be. of marketing. And in the past, there's confusion here, so I want to distinguish between the two. The primary marketing, the fundamental marketing that needs to get done for your business is the directional marketing. And what that means is when customers are looking for your service, not just your name. So right now, if you 
Google your name, the business name, you might be found, and that's good. But most people don't remember your name. They just know they need a plumber. They need a pizza. They need a hairdresser. They don't necessarily remember your name. Are you being found by your service in your area? And you can test that right now. Take your smartphone, go to Google, type in your service and your location, and where are you? That gives you a good idea. And the next called type, creative marketing, and this is what you're probably familiar with in the past. If you ever bought a newspaper ad or a radio spot or an ad in a magazine, you're doing creative marketing. And the goal of creative marketing is when you, the business, are looking for customers. So you're doing branding, you're doing top of mind awareness, you've got a little jingle like uh, Coke does or McDonald's and you're reminding people of your business. Now these two work great together, especially when your directional marketing, which is the trunk of the tree, is completed first. That must be done first before you want to go out and spend more money in radio and newspaper. Now I'm not saying they don't work, but what good is your business branding if they cannot find you easily online by your service. So first we're going to take a look at the directional marketing and there's th the three steps to that. The websites, the SEO, and the SEM. See we're moving through this pretty quick and um, I want you to write down your questions that you can send them to me and to because uh, I want to make sure you're understanding what I'm trying to share with you here in a concise short amount of time. There's three primary steps here, the, um, which are one, your website. You see, back in the day your website was just pretty much a digital brochure, it answered questions, and maybe you could put some shiny things and sparkly unicorns on it just to make it fun, but nowadays websites are your primary lead generator. In other words, they should be bringing customers to you. This is your marketing manager is your website. Your sales manager is your website. It should be doing more than just giving information. It should be soliciting sales. It should be driving traffic. That's the purpose of your website nowadays. SEO, being found by your service, not just your name. Does that sound familiar? That's the definition of directional marketing. And when people are Googling you, you know, they are looking for your service, not just your name. Are you found? Will you help that customer be found? And then, of course, the SEM, search engine marketing, means pay per click. That means when people are searching for your service, and you're not just in the SEO as demonstrated in the previous slide, but there you are at the tippy top because now you're waving your hand out there saying, hey, click me. I'll take you right to what you're looking for. So first we're going to take a look at your website. And your website is, again, very, very essential. This is the trunk of the tree. If you have a business and you have a storefront or you have an office, you must have a website. If you don't have a website, people will not take you seriously. It's almost like you're hiding from your customers on purpose. And I'm going to come back to that later on. But first, let's take a look. You're some about the fundamentals of a website nowadays. All right, your website needs to have these nowadays. These are absolute, uncompromisable must of the performance for your website. First, your website needs to be optimized for all forms of devices: uh, personal computers, tablets, and mobile. Seventy percent, and I'm going to mention this again later on, of uh, mobile services literally call directly from a mobile device and over 60 percent of searches are done on mobile devices this is happening so your website needs to recognize what device is being used and be transformed to best fit that particular device that means with a mobile phone I need to be able to navigate your entire website with just my thumb not pinching and twisting and turning the phone around your website is your digital storefront. Again, as mentioned before, it is more than a brochure. It is your lead generator. It should be making you money. Referrals. Everyone likes to say to the salesman who comes through the door, I only get sales through word of mouth and referrals. Well, guess where those referrals are looking before they come to visit you? 
they're going to your website. What does your website say about you? Let's say a referral gave a name to your business, but they don't quite remember the name of your business, but they know that what service you are. So they have to look for you by service. Are you being found? Your website must also explain how you meet a need. That's benefit versus features. See, most customers are less interested in the features that your service has as to the benefits. And what that means is answer the customer's question, what's in it for me? If I was to use your service, why did, why, what's in it for me? How do I benefit from that as opposed to other folks? And that's the difference between benefits versus features. And something else to emphasize is your website must have a very clear call to action email now or call now email for a quote you want these folks you want to get a call to action from them before they leave your website that's a lot of information and again your time is precious to me so I want to give you this information of course all this will be available afterwards for you to keep on file so that you can refer back to it now let's talk about search engine optimization that's what SEO stands for and uh, again this is being found by your service, not by your name. I cannot emphasize that enough. That is the essential of internet marketing. So with that, a um, couple things I want to point out is the search engines, Google, Yahoo, and Bing, must see your website first. They're like the local librarian. They get the book first, then they categorize the book before they put it in the card catalog. The search engines have to see your website first so they know what your website's about so that when people search for your services, they find your website. Okay? Now, one thing I must emphasize, a website without SEO is useless because it makes your website invisible. And an invisible website will not make you money. Pretty logical, right? We're all in business to make money, to sell something to somebody. But if people cannot find you, if Google cannot find you, you are not making money. All right. Now there's two major kinds of SEO. There's on-site, referring to on-site of your website, and then off-site, the work done off your website to get your website found. Now let's unpack this a little more. The way your web page is written and designed is called on-site SEO and it's designed so the search engines know what your site is about and this is important that your website is designed for that so it just can't have pretty pictures it's gotta have pretty pictures but Google doesn't see images Google sees what the image is describing and that's all done in the in the back door so to speak when um, uh, the HTML code. I'm trying to avoid tech terms for you and just keeping it basic because you've got enough information on your plate already. Off-site SEO encompasses all activity on the internet that talks about your service and directs customers to your site. If you've ever heard the term backlinks or linking, um, what Google's doing is, and all the search engines, is they're looking through the whole internet to see if there's any other authoritative sites talking about your site with links to your site. And that includes social media, Facebook, Twitter. If these other sites are linking to your site, it gives authority to your site and gives, gives you a higher authority before Google. Google trusts you and then you float up better on the search engines. Does that make sense? The simplest way I do it is links on other sites act like buoys on a boat. They make your website float. That's that's really the baby talk way to say it. But um, all right, maybe there's better ways to say it. Let's move on. Um, SEO has a long growth curve, which means it takes a while to build up your SEO because it takes a while just like with any networking it takes a while for the people to trust you and then to like you and same with Google when your website's up it takes a while for Google to trust that your website really is what it is 
to allow it to float up the search engine. So it takes a while for that growth. In a while, if it's done right, I'm, refer I'm thinking three to six months for some solid SEO floating up. The good news is, is that it has long-term results. Once your website's up in the searches, it tends to stay up there for a while. It, you know, it can hover up there for a while. But if not maintained, it will eventually float back down the searches as other businesses get their SEO act together. So that's a lot of information, but let's keep moving on. Now, some SEO websites have, uh, or websites, I apologize, have SEO baked right into it. Now, there are fundamental SEO work that um, comes with most website design companies. And when you're looking for a website design company, you want to be asking that company what SEO bundle comes with my website design because I cannot emphasize this enough, a website without SEO is useless. Useless. Make sure that if the, the company designing your website doesn't do fundamental SEO, don't spend your money with them. I also suggest that you spend the majority of your website budget on the SEO. You know, 70% on SEO, 25% on the website if you really want to make sure your website is going to work for you. Now here is a real client of mine, um, Sante, and they're in Winchester, Virginia, and they bought a website from me and our company back in May of 2013. And their major services is wine, beer, and gourmet foods. And as you can see, there's a picture of it. Now they did not buy an SEO plan from us they bought our website package that comes with SEO. Now let me point out some things for you. They bought the website in May. Before Christmas, and actually this is current now, but even before Christmas, here they are, Gourmet Food, Winchester, Virginia. See, not their name, but the service, the area. Here they are, this is called the Google Carousel. And restaurants in certain verticals or industries will be in this type of market. They'll show up in something called the carousel, listings across the top. So here they are, number one. We come down here, and now these two are aggregated sites, they're not real websites. Here, the first organic and the second organic SEO sites is Sante for gourmet foods. And there they are right at the top, the second, the third and fourth listing for gourmet foods. Now they also sell wine. Now, these three sites here on this carousel have been around for at least a decade. Sante comes up in less than six months. They're in the carousel here. Now, look down here. They're number three in the organic listings for wine in Winchester, Virginia. And these two sites here are the same business. This is their organic search. This is Yelp, an aggregation site. But the first true organic site is, again, Sante. And finally, for beer, or gourmet beers, again, here's Sante right here in the carousel. And um, again, here's the 10-year-old competitor. And then here they are, number two under the searches. And if we were to go down further into their Google Plus pages or Google Business pages, they would be there on uh, there as well. So in less than six months, under their three main services, under their area, they are at minimum the third and fourth listings plus their Google Pluses. So they are sh showing up three different times with just the baked in SEO. All right, this is how your website should be performing. And if you can go, if you go to my blog, you'll find out that one of the sales during the holiday season paid for their entire website marketing program. With, with our company. So SCM, pay-per-click, not impression. Now this is where a lot of you, you may have already tried this and you found that uh, Google was more than happy, happy to siphon your bank account because you were getting a zillion clicks and none of them were converting to sales and you were dropping. I know some of my clients um, were doing SCM on their own and were losing sometimes $500 a month on, on pay-per-click advertising. But SEM stands for Search Engine Marketing, and that is a pay-per-click, or you might have heard the term PPC. 
as your SEO improves, it's possible to claim a spot at the top of the three listings by paying to be there. And that's what SEM means, it's search engine marketing. So in other words, you're paying to be at the top of the search. Um, it's the benefits of this is it's very quick and it puts you at the top. So while you're waiting for your SEO to improve, you're at the top. And of course, pay-per-click increases your presence in the search results. So if you're, as I demonstrated at the very beginning, if your SEO is in place and you've got a pay-per-click going on and your Google Plus is done correctly, you're, you're there three times. You are, you are taking away space from other people to be there and increasing your authority. And of course, that gives you the dominant place in the local search, which is where you want to be. And of course, that increased perceived value, um, that increased um, presence in the first three locations increases your value and trust, because that's three times at the top. All right, well, we covered a lot of SEM, SEO, and pay-per-click. Um, of course, if you have any questions, there is so much more information to give you, but I want to give you the basics. And really, I just want you to understand that's how you need to be performing in your local market. That's your goal. To not pursue that goal is to hide from your customers on purpose. And as a business owner, that does not make sense. So I challenge you and encourage you. That's what your online presence must look like. So pursue it and pursue it passionately. So now I want to give you the fourth step, and this is a creative marketing that, um, strategy, not a uh, directional marketing strategy. And this is something called display advertising. And again, this works. This will work great in conjunction with your um, directional marketing. So here's how it works. If you've ever used radio, newspaper, or magazines, display advertising is the ultimate, super, way better, cooler, trackable way to do your creative marketing. So if you've ever had faith in print or radio, you are going to love display advertising. It blows this, the rest of this creative marketing out of the water. It's amazing. I can't say enough about it, but I'm going to show you why. It's so much better. See, that's the neat thing because it's digital I can even show you why here we go of course display is everything and it's way more I didn't even forgot that point here we go first display advertising uses in our case Microsoft's contextual network now that includes these national websites that get over a million visits per month um, New York Post um, NBC News there's a gazillion of these sites and more than this, there's over 500 sites that our company uses, including Facebook. And what this is, is this gets your ads seen, an ad seen, on all these sites in your local market. Not just so, I mean, obviously, if you're, if you're on the East Coast and you're selling your local market, you don't want to reach the West Coast. Not a problem. I'll unpack this all. The neat thing about display advertising is it only shows up on sites relevant to your service. So let's say you're a landscaper. You're going to show up on sites like Better Home and Gardens when it's referring to outdoor landscaping. Your ad would be there. Your ad would not necessarily be on the WWF site because it's not necessarily relevant to the market. Let me hide my PowerPoint down in the bottom corner here. And also, it's only in targeted relevant areas as I mentioned. So you can literally hit the zip code, you can hit the city, you can strategically plop your ads where you want them to be only on sites relevant to your services. It's amazing how you can drill down chasing your customers. And again, this is creative advertising. At minimum, your branding. But it goes far beyond just branding, as, as I'm already pointing out. Now, radio and newspaper, you can broadcast, that's the term broadcasting, to a geography, an area, and a, and a broader demographic, you know, like certain radio stations ladies might listen to, talk radio business owners might listen to. But you don't know who heard your ad. At the end of the day, you don't heard it. Display advertising is incredible. Before I get to 
the rest of the metrics, something else I want to point out here, is display advertising is a connection powerhouse. So if I'm reading that ad on uh, on Better Homes and Gardens and you're a landscaper and your ad shows up, here's an example of an ad right here. What you'll see is a link to the website, a link to the Facebook page, a link to the Twitter, and a map on how to get to your business, place of business. And of course, this ad is animated. It's three or four slides moving around. And if you move your cursor over it, it's animated even more. So this is a connection powerhouse. Now, no newspaper ad in a print or any print can offer this type of interactivity with your ad. All right, but display advertising does that. It's incredible way to interact with customers. Something very cool is called retargeting. Now imagine you read a newspaper ad and you, 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 you read the ad and then you put the newspaper down and you go into the bathroom, you open the medicine cabinet and there's the ad. And then you go out to the kitchen and you open up the oven and there's the same ad. And then you go over to the living room and you turn on the TV and there's the ad. What retargeting does is this, is if anybody clicks on your ad and they go to your website or your Facebook, that ad will now chase them around the internet. So if they've seen it once, they will see it again. So now they're not, if they're anywhere on Microsoft's contextual network, including Facebook, your ad's now going to chase them around for up to 14 days, reminding them. Now that is branding. And incredible. Now, the coolest thing about all digital marketing, the first three I mentioned, your website, the SEM, the SEO, and including display advertising is something called the metrics. And the metrics analyzes how people are interacting with your ad. Now, what distinguishes display advertising is the following, is the metrics begin with the impression. Now, the impression means how many people actually saw your ad. So when you send out a, a, a newspaper ad, you know it reached a circulation of 20,000 homes, 50,000 homes, but you don't know who flipped to your ad on page three, section C, down at the bottom right-hand corner. With display advertising, you know exactly how many people saw that ad sitting next to the article. It starts with how many people saw your ad. So now you've eliminated the the barrier of reaching your potential customer. And again, these are customers who are already reading articles that are relevant to your services. But now you're already measuring the impression. How did they interact with your ad? And now you're getting down to the fine tuning. You can do A-B testing and measure different ads. Now you can try to elicit better, stronger responses to your ad instead of just hoping the ad got out there and trying to put a coupon discount to try to measure, you know, or instead of relying on asking them when they call you on the phone, now you can track it. And of course I have a sales funnel here. Remember your website is to be a lead generator. We have impressions we're measuring. Now you can even measure the clicks, how many people interacted with your ad and we can measure the leads, meaning we can put a call tracking number and measure how many calls that ad generated for you. And you know what? We can even record the calls, but I'm getting ahead of First, display advertising is far more cost effective than newspaper or radio and newspaper. Let me explain. Let's say you buy a, a typical newspaper ad in color, might cost you $500 for one day. One day gets your ad out there to the market and it's completely immeasurable to to the conciseness of display advertising. Now if you were to spend five hundred dollars a month which is not the entry level with our company but if you were to spend five hundred dollars a month on display advertising that would get you over a hundred and fifty thousand impressions a month you already know that 150,000 eyeballs are going to see your ad, and that's where you begin your measuring at. It's far more cost effective. And uh, um, something to, I can highly encourage you to look at. 
Now, again, display advertising comes in all shapes and sizes. Um, there's um, skyscraper ads, which is here. And now again, these ads are animated. These slides slowly come in one at a time and move up the list. And of course, as you can see, there's a link to your website, your Facebook, Twitter, and um, directions to your place. There's a leaderboard. This is the most traditional view here is the medium rectangle view. And of course, mobile devices. It will sh banner ads will show up on a mobile device. Now take a look at this. A call button. So from the mobile phones, people can call directly to your business. They don't have to click the ad to go to the website to find the phone number to call you. There's the call button. Call, make reservations, find out your business hours, you know. It depends on what call to action you have, but obviously that call to action better have something to do with making a call. I've given you lots of information, so now let's review everything and move from there. First, your website should have a solid SEO program to it. And SEO again is being found by your service, not just your name, on the major search engines, Google, Yahoo, and Bing. Now, our secret sauce is Haibu. And for Haibu, 93% of our clients reach Google page one in 90 days. No agency can guarantee page one so if anyone promises or guarantees page one, you know that's a yellow flag. But in our case, we're simply stating the statistical facts. SEM, pay-per-click, always page one, always on the top. And you pay per click, not impression. So you might get 20,000 impressions just to get 10 clicks. But that's okay. At minimum, you're getting those impressions. And finally, display advertising, which is a creative marketing strategy. And of course, that focuses on the geography, where you are, contextual and behavioral, what customers are reading. And then that retargeting means that the ads will chase them around. And if you'll notice, this is pay per impression, not click. And again, we have a huge list of sites on Microsoft's contextual network. So you want to make sure your website is found on the search engines. That is so fundamental. You want to make sure that you strengthen that authority with some pay-per-click to show up at the top. And then when folks are reading and, and browsing the internet in other places, they see your ad. So just where the large national brands might be, your ad can be there on those national sites. So now you've strengthen your directional marketing and then you've spread out your net throughout the rest of the uh, digital world reminding people encouraging people branding your business and when you add these three up that is an incredibly strong simple strategy wise way to drive traffic to your website and sales and again how you know how can you be sure that this is gonna work because the coolest part is everything here is completely trackable. It's what I call closed loop marketing. No guesswork is in this anymore. The only guesswork is tweaking it for improvement. But you know that the impressions got out there. You know how many people clicked on your site. You know if your site is up in Google. It's either there or it is not. You know how many people can click. You know how many calls. And again, we can even record the calls to know if this is a genuine lead converting to a sale. Isn't that amazing? The guesswork is over. You can track it all, and you can know exactly how your advertising dollars is working for you. Incredible stuff.
This is your free toolbox. And here we go. The first site is called the freegrader.com. And here you put in your, your website, you'll see there's a little bar, and it'll assess your website on um, certain components that are needed for SEO. This is a fantastic tool, and you can save all these. And of course, um, the next one is SEM Rush. Now, when I meet with clients personally, this is one of my favorite tools. It shows the performance of your website by the SEO, by those keywords, by the month. So I can literally see a graph of, of how your website was receiving traffic. And it's a third party tool, which is um, you can always check up on the local companies that are taking care of your services um, with this tool. It's a great tool. The next one is the UBL stands for Universal Business Listings. And if you put in your name, and the name of your business you'll see a little field there and when you put in your phone number your address it will show you all the major business listings out there um, on the internet of where your site should be and how the internet is really perceiving your business and if they're incongruent if the website has south instead of s dot it will flag it as a different business so you want to make sure that on every one of those listings your information is exactly the same and it's self-explanatory once you see this information and finally the archive.org under the web archive you'll see there's a place to put your site and it will show you how many times your site has been crawled by Google's spider bots and, will sh and um, what Google last saw your site doing and the, what would ever cause Google to go look at your site is whether there's new content, fresh content, and relevant content. So it's a great way to review how your website is doing. So that's it. That's your free toolbox. And again, let me encourage you, um, if you have any questions or want to discuss your marketing strategies, or if, when you've done these free as, uh, assessments of your website and it makes you weep, don't weep. This is completely fixable, but it's also primary and fundamental for your business marketing. So I hope this is beneficial to you and looking forward to um, talking to you later. Have a great and successful business.